Okay, so the, the next uh, lecture is like a, a small tutorial on, on PyTorch. And uh, what I will try to cover is first some of the basics of PyTorch and then how we can use this framework to train your model. So the training process, we already discussed like uh, the high level, the conceptual uh, idea behind it, but we will look into like the code, the, the specific code, which is uh, used to do that. And later in the tutorial, you will see, uh, which will be like hands-on tutorial, you will see like the actual code running uh, for, for that process. Okay, so let's start with the basics. Uh, there are like a uh, lot of lot of uh, deep learning libraries out there. And again, this is just a very uh, small list. And daily you will see like different, different frameworks are being um, developed for different applications. And so we have Torch, we have PyTorch, TensorFlow, you might have heard of, then we have Theano. And I'm not sure if like people still use Theano. And again, these are all variants. Uh, so PyTorch is something like, which is considered like the easiest to, to follow because it's, it's it's based on Python. And it's like, uh, I think uh, it, it has a very good documentation as well. TensorFlow, it's it's very powerful, but again, if you, if you don't have expertise uh, in deep learning or coding, then I think you will struggle a lot. So in that sense, I think the PyTorch is something which has a very like, you will say like a non-steep non uh, learning curve. Okay, and that's why we, we chose uh, PyTorch. And uh, we have, we have uh, said that earlier, it's up to you if you want to use a different framework, if you have expertise, perfectly fine. But then like uh, whatever tutorial we are going to have, whatever help we'll provide, it will be mainly focused on PyTorch. And that doesn't mean we will not help you with other frameworks, we will, but that could be like limiting and limited and maybe not as extensive as PyTorch. Okay, so in PyTorch, we have tensors and these are same as like you use NumPy arrays, okay? The only difference is these tensors can also be used on a GPU. And why we need GPU? Because we want like faster computation. If you don't use GPU, you just use your CPUs for training. It will take a lot of, lot of time. And you will, go, go, you, will, you will experience that when you are uh, doing your programming assignment too like the difference between CPU and GPU. So these GPUs are uh, usually people used to uh, develop these for like playing games and video rendering and all that. But these days, all uh, you, you all know that they are very, very useful for training these uh, deep learning models. And the, the reason is like they are, they have like very, very optimized computations, matrix multiplications, which makes the uh, computation very, very fast. And I think so far you, you I think you must understand that Inside your network, whatever you do, it's most of the time it's like matrix operation, right? You're either you're multiplying matrices, you are adding matrices, subtracting matrices. So we, we have like very, very optimized code for that in uh, for GPUs. And I think CUDA is something, a library which actually uh, enable that. So let's try to understand like what are different uh, variables available in PyTorch, which how they relate to like uh, what you have in NumPy and how, how they can be useful. So first of all, if you're using PyTorch, you will have to import this uh, Torch library. So that's a standard you do in uh, Python as well. If you want to create a random matrix, and this matrix could be like one dimension, two dimension, or multiple, it, it can have any, any dimensions. So you just call this function torch.rand and two cross three is just telling you the shape of that matrix, right? So this is like a two cross three matrix. This is a three cross three matrix. And like uh, like Python, you can also just print these values and it will give you like what, what is uh, stored in on these variables. Okay, so this, so far so good. It's pretty simple uh, the way you do in uh, Python as well. The only difference is like uh, how you actually initialize these. Okay. These will give you like uh, tensors in the, in the form of matrices. Now, let's say if you want to create like a array or a matrix which has all zeros, Again, you can do dot, uh, dot zeros. Again, this is same as you do in uh, Python uh, or using NumPy. And you give the shape. Okay. You can also initialize your tensors directly from data. And the way to do that is you use like this ten tensor API and you give the values. And this is going to create like a one dimensional vector which has these two values. Okay. And this is like, I think pretty useful when you're actually creating or you're designing your architecture, you need to debug like, okay, what's the size of the tensor at this point of time? 
So this uh, variable or tensor dot size can give you give it that value. And again, this I think function you also have in uh, NumPy. Now let's quickly uh, go over to uh, different operations uh, which can be done. So we'll cover the basic ones. Of course, there are a lot more than this. This we have seen like how to create two different uh, matrices. Okay, so these are two different tensors. If we have to add these, you can just call torch.add and pass these as variables. Okay. And again, print, so we'll just print the values. Indexing is something like very powerful uh, coming from Python. The same indexing also applies for PyTorch. And if, uh, and as I said, like Python was a prerequisite, so you should know uh, all of this already. It's just, uh, I think the new piece of uh, information will be, this can also be done in PyTorch. Okay, so what this operation is trying to do here is, if X is a four cross four matrix, you are actually indexing uh, the, the first dimension, or you can say like the first row of the second dimension here, and you are taking all the values in the first dimension. All right, so this is going to give you like a one dimensional vector with four values. Resizing is also very useful. I think when you um, design your network, uh, you will see like it's, it's very useful uh, at a lot of places. Let's say this is your vector. And this is a little complicated, uh, but not, not that hard. Okay, so if this is a four cross four matrix, then you know that this will have 16 different values. And let's say you want to convert this matrix into a one dimensional vector. So you can do that using this view uh, function here. So view is something like what's the target shape you want. In this case, it's telling you the target shape is 16. And Y will be just like a one dimensional vector with 16 values. And those 16 values will be coming from this uh, four cross four matrix. And you know, this has 16 values, so you can do this which means that not all operations will be valid for view. You will have to make sure that you know how many elements you have in your input data. Okay. So this is like another very interesting use of view. Again, it will be very useful. What it's trying to do is, so this is x dot view, which means that we are, uh, which means that we are trying to reshape the, the x tensor over here. And the shape is when you have negative one, it means you don't care. All right, so it's like something you can, uh, the, the, the library will automatically compute for you. So whatever this number is, you don't care about this. So that's for, that's negative one. And eight is something you're saying the second dimension should be eight. Now you know that this is four cross four, again, two dimensional matrix. This is again a two dimensional matrix. Second dimension is eight. So automatically the first dimension will be two, right? Because this has 16 values. So it has to have uh, two values that will make it eight cross two 16 because you can't like change the number of values you, you have in your matrix, right? So that two will be automatically computed by, by the library and you just put don't care here. And again, you can print like the, the sizes. So X dot size, you know, it's a four cross four. Y since uh, you reshape it to like a one dimensional vector, it will have 16 different values. And Z, uh, you put like a two dimensional matrix where the third, first dimension is don't care. That's going to give you two cross eight. Okay, slightly complicated, but I don't think it's uh, very complicated to, uh, to be able to understand. All right, so now let's try to compare like torch tensors versus, num versus NumPy arrays. I mean, so far you have seen that whatever you can do with NumPy arrays, you can do with uh, torch tensors. So that more or uh, less like uh, true. Now NumPy arrays, whatever computation is happening, it will happen in the CPU, okay? One big, biggest difference why we need tensors is because tensors will allow you to perform those computations, whatever those computations are, multiplication, addition on the GPU, which will be much more efficient, okay? That doesn't mean that you can't do these, uh, you can't use these tensors on CPU. Of course, they will allow you to do computation on CPU as well, but in addition to CPU, you can use them on GPUs. Okay, so torch dot, uh, torch dot once, uh, uh, five is the uh, dimension. So that will give you like a uh, five dimensional, uh, one dimensional vector with five different values. It's one, so all will be one. And this allows you to convert your NumPy array to torch tensor. And again, this will come very handy because you'll have to like uh, go back and forth. It might be you want to work completely on NumPy because you're 
operations are being done on CPUs. And then when you want to start like training of a model, then you want to transfer all of those NumPy arrays to uh, PyTorch tensors. Okay. So to go from to go from PyTorch tensors to NumPy array, you just do like your tensor dot NumPy, then B is going to be uh, a NumPy array. A was a PyTorch tensor. You can do like the other way around as well. For example, if you have like a NumPy array, then you can call like torch dot from NumPy. So in this case, A is your NumPy array and B is your torch tensor. Okay, so these are like, I think two handy uh, functions you will need. Now, this is like the basic uh, operation, the matrix multiplication, as I said, like most of the time when you are transforming your activations in, inside the network, you are actually performing matrix multiplication. And of course, I mean, the whole reason behind having those frameworks is you don't have to write these mat uh, matrix multiplication operations. All right. So that will be automatically done by the framework for you. But in some cases, you might have to uh, write this. So let's try to understand uh, how this is done. And again, so you're creating two different matrices, two, two, uh, two cross three, three cross three. So you can just call torch dot matrix multiplication and matrix one, matrix two. It will just multiply. And you can see that like you have to have like compatibility between these two matrices. So these two matrices are compatible and the resultant matrix will be of shape two cross three. Okay. So the requirement was the number of rows in this should be equal to number of uh, number of columns in this should be equal to number of rows in the second matrix, which is like three in um, both the cases. Okay, and you can see like the uh, size is actually two cross three. Now, we we don't multiply matrices like just independently because you train like on batches. Uh, so you, when you when you train your model, you have like a mini batch, right? let's say 16 samples or 32 samples. So then it also allows you to actually perform matrix multiplication in batches. In this case, we have a batch of 10. So this could be like 10 different matrices, each of shape three cross four. And the second matrix, uh, it's, uh, it has a shape of four cross five. So then again, you can multiply these two in batches. Again, you have a simple BMM function here. So the result of this operation will be, again, you will get like a batch of 10 because each sample is independent. And when you multiply these two, this is the common axis. So the resultant matrix will be three cross five, which means that you will get 10, 10 different matrices and each matrix will have a shape three cross five. Okay, and there are like a lot of other uh, operations. So this was just for a starter. And most of these, you won't have to worry. I think most of the time, uh, just addition multiplication will do the job for you. Uh, concatenation, again, this is, uh, I think, very useful uh, when you design your network. So if you have two different vectors, you want to just concat them. And it's a basic like concatenation operation you do in, uh, Pyth uh, in Python as well. So you can just concat two different tensors. And then you have squeeze and unsqueeze operation let's say you want to get rid of some of the dimensions in your matrix. Let's say you have a five dimensional matrix and you, you want to get rid of let's say third or fourth matrix, uh, third or fourth dimension, which only has a single value. And so that, that will be like skews, squeeze, right? Squeeze and then you unsqueeze it like you want to expand the matrix or you want to increase the dimensionality of a matrix. So again, you use uh, unsqueeze for that. And of course, like a very good documentation is available uh, at this link. You should uh, definitely refer to that uh, for more uh, complicated tensor operations. Now let's try to understand with all those tensors, what will actually happen when you're actually building your neural network or your convolutional neural network, how the computation is being done. Okay, you're just importing the torch library. You create a variable, which is like a matrix true cross true. Let's say this is your input variable. And let's say you have another variable y. Again, uh, it's two cross one, which means it's just two different values. Another variable. So I will just uh, quickly go through what these variables are. So let's say this is your simple neural network architecture. And the idea is x is your input data, which is defined by this uh, variable over here. And w is the network weights, all right, defined by uh, this line over here. You can see that the, there's an argument like requires grad equals to true. This means that this actually is a acronym for require gradient. 
when it is true, which means that this is like a learnable parameter and this is a parameter of a network, okay? Because these are weights and X and Y are not because this is like data which will flow in the network. So you're multiplying X with, uh, with the weights, all right? And that will give you A and B here represents the biases. So what you do, you know, like the normal neural network uh, formulation, if you write the equation, that should be like, if Y is your output, then that y should be equals to x times the weights, and then you add the biases to those. So this is like a very simple formulation for a for a uh, for a neural network. And if you write this using a uh, PyTorch, you'll have to define all these variables, okay? And then you can just write one uh, one line code over here. So this is torch dot matrix multiplication, which which means like you're multiplying x with uh, with the weights plus you are adding biases and then you are applying like the sigmoid activation on this output. And that's going to give you the P which is the network's prediction. So this simple one line actually defines a neural network for you. Okay, so pretty simple. Then the next part is you need a loss function. And again, don't worry about like this uh, complex equation here. We, we, we'll talk about like uh, lo loss functions later. So this is a simple cross entropy loss. I think we have seen this equation before, so it might not be uh, difficult to understand for you. This is the same formulation, same equation. So loss in this case will be, uh, you know that uh, this is the ground truth. This is the prediction. And again, this is the ground truth. This is the prediction, all right? You can just uh, write, write the uh, loss function here. And your cost will be, you just average your loss. Because if you have, let's say 10 samples, you will compute the uh, loss over all these samples and take a mean, okay? And then you have to uh, minimize this cost to train this network. Okay, so let me put all those three uh, over here. So this is your neural network, which is taking X as input, W are the weights, B are the biases. And again, B are kind of weights as well. And this is giving you the loss function. So based on this prediction and this ground truth, you can compute the loss. You are just averaging the loss over multiple samples. Then what you do is you just do a backward call. Again, this is a library function provided to you by uh, PyTorch. And all the chain rules we studied, the backpropagation we studied, everything is being taken care of by this single function call. So you don't have to create uh, compute gradients. You don't have to perform like those simple steps. Everything will be taken care of by this simple function. So what this function is doing is it will take this loss value and it will compute gradient for all the variables in your network, okay? And basically it will compute the gradient one by one, right? And it will use the chain rule to go backwards. And once uh, you, you run this backward, then you can see like, uh, what is the value of the weights and what are the values of the, of the biases? So when you train this thing, over different samples, these values will be changed, all right? And of course, like Y is your ground truth. So you don't have to worry about that. You will provide that uh, to train the network. And X is again your training sample. So you will provide that. So the only thing which is being trained is the weights and the biases. So this is like a very simple formulation, how you can train your, uh, a simple maybe neural network using PyTorch. But again, you can easily generalize this to like your more complex CNNs which you are going to develop. But of course that process is not going to be this complex. This was just to give an idea like uh, how this can be done very easily with uh, PyTorch. Any questions on this? Okay, question from Vijay. For calculating feature map size, will the formula get changed with having skip connections? The formula won't change why won't the formula change? Because I mean, skip connection is something you're, ju you're just taking those values, right? And at the end, it will be just some kind of function. And the, the size of the feature maps should be consistent. Like if you're adding two matrices, right? So the size should be same. So this formula, I mean, it's, you, can, you can call this formula on any, any variable you have in, inside your network. So I mean, maybe I'm, I'm not getting your question right. You want to rephrase it or I was able to answer it. 
Sorry, Vijay. We, uh, we, at least I, I can't hear you. There's a lot of echo. Maybe you can write. We have the formula right. Yeah, that formula will not change. Right. So actually, let me let me go back. I probably uh, understood what your confusion is. I mean, it will be the same formula. So one thing you'll have to consider is when you're adding uh, the skip connection. I think someone's mic is not off. If you can put that on mute, uh, that would be very helpful. Thank you. So I can go back. Oh, that was a different slide. Ah, sorry. Okay, so let me try to put it here. So you you have your input x, right? And Let's say this data is coming. You have some con layer. C1 gives you data. You have another layer, con2. So what you're doing is you're actually adding here, putting it here, right? So if you think about this, let's say your uh, size of X is, let's say your best size is 10 and your activation map size is again, maybe 15, cross 15. Like, so this is X and this is Y. And this is your best size. And this is your number of channels, like how many kernels you had in the previous layer. So let's say this is 100. Okay, so one thing you should understand is the shape will change uh, after perform performing this convolution, right? So it might go to 10 cross, let's say 12 cross, and this is just an example. I mean, don't worry about why I'm writing 15 or 12. It could be anything, depending upon like what your convolution layer is. And again, it might change here like 10, and then again, let's say eight, cross eight, cross maybe 200. Okay, so this 10 will never change because that's the best size. That will have to be same. This is like the number of channels, which will depend upon how many, how many kernels you have in the previous layer. And again, this is uh, the same. And this will depend upon like what kind of padding you are using, whether you have max pooling or not. Okay. So if you think about this now, at this point coming out from C2, if the shape is 10 cross, eight cross, eight cross, 200, but X was 10 cross, 15 cross, 15 cross 100. Right, so what kind of operation you are doing? So the these need to be like consistent, but if you can't add these to uh, with the, with the, these shapes, right? Because this is like eight cross eight and this is fifteen cross fifteen. So in, you you have to make sure that either you perform some modification to the feature maps over here, either max pooling or something, or you keep the shape of the activation map consistent as you are going from this flow, so that they are compatible. Does, does that clarify your doubt? Okay, great. So that's good. Let's move on. Okay, so that was the first part, uh, just the basics, like uh, how to define variables, how to use it. Uh, for for your uh, networks.